Hello, my viewer. This is Health Now Show, your health friend, with me, Jane Kariuki. And as always, remember, I am a counseling psychologist. And today, I'm very delighted, happy. You can see my smile on because of the topic that we are having today. I'd want to take this opportunity to welcome all our viewers from all over the world and also in Kenya, different parts of Kenya. You are all welcome. And we, as we say on this show, is that we are here to share information. We are here to sensitize you, create awareness in our communities, in our places of work, in our families of different areas that touch on your health. They may, it may be health, mentally, emotionally, their physical health, and all this makes you a better person, a healthier person, and you're able to do your daily activities, your work, your functions, your, you perform better in your workplaces, in your tasks that you have, because you are a better person. You are able to be well adjusted, even in the community and in the interactions with the people that you, you are with. And this episode, gives me a lot of goosebumps because it is a very important uh, topic to me and I guess to all of us. We have always heard people say, this person is so resilient. And then we wonder, what, what is that? So our topic today is resilience. Our guest today to take us through this very, very important part of the topic, resilience is somebody that I love, somebody I've worked with, a journey in terms of professional, in terms of friendship, and she is ready to take us through. I'll allow her to introduce herself, and then we'll move on. And remember, our topic is resilience. And before I invite her to come in, I would like you, our viewer, to request you to get to our YouTube, channel, Health Now Show, and our Facebook, and ask a question about resilience. You can ask us, what is resilience? And our, our professional today is going to share with us, and she's going to support us. So don't forget to do that as we go along. And now, without taking much time, because I want us to have ample time to be able to go through this, and to share this information that is so critical. I believe it is critical to me and to you also that it's my friend, Ruth Karunda. I'll allow her to introduce herself and then we'll move on as we go along. Welcome, Ruth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jane. As Jane has said, my name is Ruth Jerry Karunda. I am a counseling psychologist and specialized in marriage and family therapy. I also work. I work with the Presbyterian Church, a department that is known to Presbyterian on theological education by extension. And uh, we have a program on guidance and psychological counseling. So I lecture and also I do one-on-one -on -one counseling. I must say that I'm humbled to be here and I appreciate being one of the team in this wellness program. Thank you. Thank you so much and welcome once again. Mm -hmm. Now, we are talking about resilience. Mm -hmm. Ruth, mm -hmm. unpack for us. Mm -hmm. What is resilience? Uh, right, that's a good question, Jane. Yeah. Um, in life, it is a journey. Uh -huh. A journey that all of us go through. Mm -hmm. And in this journey, we have good times, very good times indeed, a jabo moment of life. But as we journey, we also get ourselves with bad times, times that we call bad, times that we say they are hardships, times that they are setbacks, times that have painful experiences that we never ever thought would experience. And at that moment, we are weakened and our mindsets are affected. We don't have the perseverance to be able to pick up ourselves and move on. So when we talk about resilience, we basically are talking about those times in life 
that we are hit on the ground. Uh, those moments of life that we don't have strength to move on, those moments that we have been knocked down and we're on the floor. So that is the time that we, on we are down and uh, the society around us expect us to pick up and move on. Mm -hmm. So basically resilience is being able to pick ourselves up after we are knocked down and to be able to swim through the tides of life or against the tides and uh, recover from that situation that we dislike but we are in. That is what resilience is about. And Jen, everybody goes through a difficult time. There are those moments you've been knocked down. There are those moments I've also been knocked down. And even those people that we love and are very close to us mm -hmm. have been knocked down. True. So how then do we recorrect ourselves mm -hmm. and wake up? Mm -hmm. That is what we talk about resilience, being able to pick those pieces together and get ourselves back to foot. Not because sometimes things are working good. Mm -hmm. we, we don't bounce back because it is okay. We bounce back because sometimes we require adapting to the situation mm -hmm. that we are in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, like, for example, if somebody goes through a loss of a loved one, that person is never coming back again. True. But there is life ahead mm -hmm. because you have been left alive, I've been left alive. Mm -hmm. So how do I pick those pieces, mm -hmm. recorrect myself, mm -hmm. and be able to look back or to forge on mm -hmm. and equally adapt to the new lifestyle that I'm experiencing, True. I am in. True. That is what we want to talk about. How do we pick our pieces together? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I talk about resilience, mm -hmm. I think about a ball. Mm -hmm. I grew up in the village. Mm -hmm. And uh, I grew up with boys. Yes. And I used to see my cousins and my brothers make a ball when they want to play football. And they would take papers, fold them together, you know, tie them with a string, and make a ball. And uh, the moment the, the ball hit the ground, it basically rolled. Yes, yes. And uh, there was no one time that ball would uh, bounce back unless someone goes and picks it. Look at it today. We have the soccer ball. Yes. The one that has pressure. Yes. The moment it hits the ground, it bounces back. True. So when we have hardships in life, resilience is when we hit down and we are able to bounce back. I think that's a very important illustration. Mm. The bouncing back of a ball. Mm. I hear you. Right. Let's go on. Right. So it is important to yeah. bounce back. Yeah. Because when we do not, we find ourselves grounded. And uh, what are some of these things that will make us get knocked down? We've just completed the general elections. Yes. And uh, there, there were so many candidates that yes. were vying for different seats. That's true. And uh, I know you had your own preference. Not kabisa. <laughs> and uh, some of them made it, others did not make it. True. But as they started the journey, they saw success. Mm -hmm. That's why they embarked on their journey. Yes. Along the way, uh, things have happened and changes have taken place. Yes. And at the final finishing point, a number have lost. Some which we thought they wouldn't, others which we thought they would, mm -hmm. but they have lost. Yes. And bouncing back after such an experience that one has invested emotionally in it. And you know, we are very good in telling people, you are my candidate. And you, I'll give you my vote. I'll give you my vote. Yes. And we keep making them know that they are winning. Only at the ballot box where he finds or she finds it is only two or three, and the followers were so many. It requires energy to be able to bounce back like that ball. Crisis in life come. We have had, we are recovering from COVID crisis, and a lot happened. People lost their jobs. Marriages were lost. Relationships were strained. And a lot happened because it was unexpected. And some people, or most people, were knocked down. True. So picking self together, 
bouncing back to life, adjusting to life situation, because some situations requires adjusting. You lost a job. Mm -hmm. You may not go. I may not go back to that job that I lost. Mm -hmm. I require to adjust. Yeah. Maybe the rest of from the time I I got employed, I've been in employment for that years, and I've lost my job. I'm not re reached the retirement time. Mm -hmm. So what do I do with myself? And what do you do with all this time that you have now in your hands? Very true. Mm -hmm. I have a family to take care of. Mm -hmm. How do I move on? I have an identity. People knew me as an employed person. Now I'm not employed anymore. I was not prepared. Those are times that we are knocked down. We lose our loved ones. True. People that are variable in our lives. Yes. And sometimes you are never prepared of any loss. Uh, oh, okay, sometimes you may look at it like somebody has been sick mm -hmm. and there is an anticipation of a loss. Mm -hmm. But there are times there are sudden losses. True. Nobody had prepared you. Mm -hmm. You never saw it coming. Mm -hmm. But it has come. Yeah. It knocks you down mm -hmm. and you're on the ground. Mm -hmm. How do we pick ourselves together? That energy, that ability to be able to recorrect self, to pick those pieces that have, uh, have to move on is very important. Relationships break. I grew up knowing my time. I'm what Jane. <laughs> <laughs> My time. Okay. It, being old is relative. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I yes. agree very much. Yes. Even a very young child will talk about I'm age. Old. <laughs> so I'm looking at it like uh, I am old. Okay. So I agree. looking at those times back, yeah. I, I always tell my sons, I'm a mother of two boys. Yes. And I tell them, mm. uh, many are those times that uh, men were refused, it is it being refused? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they still moved on. Uh -huh. They had energies to bounce back. Mm -hmm. A girl says no. Yes. And you had focused and seen, this is the one. Yes. And I'm not looking again. Maybe you've been praying on your knees <laughs> and you feel like God has answered it. Yeah. And then you start the journey. Yeah. And she says yes and you start the journey. Mm -hmm. You progress for a while. Mm -hmm. And then something else comes. And someone decides to walk away. It can be a lady. It can be a man. How do you pick those broken pieces? And everybody knew you are now out of the rig. Mm -hmm. How do you pick yourself up again yeah. and be able to move on? Mm -hmm. Because those are times mm -hmm. that people are knocked down. Mm -hmm. And it saddens that uh, some people may feel like they don't have anything else left. And we experience some of the things we are watching. Mm -hmm. Someone finds life is not worth rest, and they commit suicide. There is homicidal cases. A and it's saddening us because probably the key challenge is bouncing back after such a crisis has taken place. So I strongly feel that it's important for us to be able to understand and even to help those that people we love how to bounce back when such situations come. Because they will come. It is inevitable in this journey of life. Mm -hmm. Just like we said, we have good moments. Yes. And uh, some challenging moments. Yes. This life hardship will come. How do we keep moving even when it's tough? And even when the tough gets going. I hear that statement a lot. Mm. That when the, when the tough when the, the going gets tough, mm. the tough gets going. Mm -hmm. But do we actually internalize that and mm. do it? from what you are talking about mm -hmm. is like we would need more so mm -hmm. that we can you know be psyched mm -hmm. that we need actually to bounce back mm -hmm. we'll get to how we can bounce back mm -hmm. later on mm -hmm. but uh, you can go on mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. right uh i don't know whether you have ever fallen jane and dropping on the ground? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Many times. Uh, had you ever planned it that you were planning to drop? No. It just happened. I just slipped and, and fell. So when you're on the ground, the next thing is, what is wrong? Mm -hmm. What has happened? Yes. You don't believe yourself. You can imagine if you, f you drop down uh -huh. at the stage and uh, y people are going to wonder. Yeah. I, I, it happened to me uh -huh. during COVID time. Uh -huh. You know, those are the time people... <laughs> I think it's somebody. Yes. Is it, yeah. And you know, nobody wants to come and pick you up because they don't know whether it's COVID. 
true. Yeah. So that is what happens when life knocks us down. Yes. It is unexpected. You had not planned it. It has happened. So there are so many questions that plants in one's mind, even yeah. before you start thinking, how do I pick myself up? So basically, bouncing back is not a walk in the park. It is not something you will wake up and say, fine, I have, I've, I've dropped down. Let me pick myself and dust myself. There is a lot of struggle even to pick yourself up. I want to just bring, be briefly share my own personal experience. Go ahead. Because I said all of us, life has knocked us down. Yes, true. About five years, now almost five years ago, mm -hmm. I lost a family member. Okay. And uh, not only a family member, but a best friend to me. Okay. I lost my spouse. Okay. And uh, in my family lineage, you know, we talk about family lineage. Yes, yes. I looked at my grandmother, she was at her 90. I looked at my father-in-law, he died at 100 and plus years. So I knew in our family lineage, we all die old, old. It's old age. Yes. And suddenly someone just dies. And, uh, and very suddenly indeed. And I didn't know what to do. I found myself on the floor. I am one person who do counseling. I work with people in such situations. Loss and grief. Yes, yes. A lot of, you know, dealing with loss and grief. Yes. And I mean myself. Mm -hmm. And I remember somebody telling me, Ruth, what you've been telling others, tell yourself. Doctor, heal yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is anything I would tell myself at that point in life? I don't think so. I'm on the ground. Yeah. I don't know how to pick my pieces again. I'm actually thinking when I'm there, I'm supposed to pick myself and tell people about how to overcome loss, how to deal with grief, and yet I'm struggling with my own. And some of the life experiences that I have gone through have made me a better person in loss and grief. So be, getting that energy was not easy. Jen, there are times I would wake up in the morning, I'm supposed to go to work, but getting myself out of bed was hard work. It was hard work. Hard work. Taking myself to the bathroom and shower was hard work. Getting myself out of that house was also hard work. So it is not easy, but it is needful, really needful, if we are going to live meaningful life after a setback, after a crisis, after a difficult time. Yes. Uh, resilience comes in different forms. Okay. Because um, a human being is holistic. Yes. We are physical being. We are emotional being. There is a mental part of us and there is a spiritual part of us. So when we are bouncing back from those hard situations, when you are bouncing back from hardship and crisis that we experience in life, the holistic being is involved. Because if I bounce back one type, one side of my situation, then the last, the other one is left with still some unresolved issues. So bouncing back is comes out in different forms. The first type of resilience is physical resilience. And this happens a lot when human beings or when we experience the physical stressors. And uh, physical stressors can be physical demands. I don't know. People have gone for exercises, for gym. Yeah. Uh, they want to cut weight mm -hmm. and uh, they want to look good. Yes. I have tried it not once, not twice. <laughs> but you look good to me. Oh, thank you. Thank <laughs> you, look you good to me. <laughs> yeah. So when you go for physical activities or trying to keep fit, yeah. the aerobics and engaging activities, even just running is work. And uh, when you get the first day, it's not good experience. There's a lot of pain, physical muscle pains. I remember one time I went to a gym <laughs> and I almost cried because the instructor is, the instructor is insisting, mm -hmm. keep going, keep going. And you're so exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Come evening, every part of you or me is aching. And there is a lot of physical demands to pick up self and go for gym tomorrow. So there could be those physical demands. 
there are people who engage in hard activities, physical activities, that requires a lot of their energy, and sometimes it weighs us down. So that picking self, the physical demands, picking self from those stressors, the physical stressors, is part of resilient. There are physical illnesses, which is a stressor. Uh, someone has gone through a difficult time in terms of their health. And uh, probably, for example, somebody has lost a part of self. It can be an amputation of a hand, a leg, or getting more serious where somebody gets spine injuries to the extent that they have now to be confined in a wheelchair. Bouncing back, even in trying tiny steps to pick self again is needful. It's physical resilience. That ability to bounce back after physical stressor or when we're going through physical injuries on where, on or on when we have physical demands is part of resilience. And sometimes we have seen people even in hospital, two people have gone through surgery, the same surgery, they had the same condition, but one person is discharged earlier than the other. Or one is able to do a few things for themselves. They can walk themselves to the washroom, they can do a little things for themselves, some little things for themselves. Yet another one is still grounded on, in bed because they are feeling like, I don't have the energy to raise my hand and reach out for a cup of tea. I must be fed. So those tiny little steps after physical stress are called physical resilience. And they help us to be able to start regaining ourselves and regaining our energy. I have a friend of mine who got a back problem. And after many visitations to the doctor and uh, struggling to get back to her feet, it didn't work. So finally, she, the doctor said she has to be confined mm -hmm. in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can imagine we walked for years. And now a time has come you can't walk on your own. And uh, getting to understand that I can go work, I, go, I can go to work with my wheelchair, feel good about it, appreciate who I am at the moment, and be able to look at myself as fear-free and wonderfully made. It, is, it requires bouncing back. Being able to do a few things that you are doing so easily with your physical engagement, and now you can't, it requires hard work. So physical resilience is very important, and especially when we experience the physical stresses of life, which sometimes find us. True. Yeah. True. That is one type of resilience. Yes. We have another type of resilience, which we call mental resilience. And probably this is what most of us focus mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. because we want to be mentally stable. Yes. Mental resilience is that ability to be able to develop mental toughness. See, people call it, I don't know in the Kiswahili language, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, developing that mental toughness mm -hmm. at a crisis situation. Mental toughness at a difficult time. Not just physical, people looking at you and seeing you are looking tough. But even from within, you can feel it. That is about facing this situation head on with my head. And bouncing back and getting myself to my feet using mental strength. So that ability to be able to gain mental strength after a difficult situation is mental resilience. And I guess it is also not a walk in the park. True. Just the way you have put it earlier. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is a walk in the park mm -hmm. that uh, you just wake up and focus your, your thoughts and your mind mm -hmm. on a particular thing mm -hmm. that uh, has put you down. Very true. Yeah. Indeed, it's true, Jane. It's not an easy task. It, is, it requires working on self. Because when those situations of life hit us on the floor, mm -hmm. or when we are knocked down yeah. by life situations, yeah. we are destabilized in terms of our thinking. A lot change. The way I viewed life change. So it requires some energy to be able to change and get tough. 
I have shared about my personal experience. Yes. After I went back to work and I resumed work, one of the things I struggled with is how do I introduce myself again? I remember in uh, one of the our, our programs, I was teaching evangelist in evangelism mm -hmm. and I had leadership mm -hmm. uh, topic, leadership skills topic. Yes. And one of the topics is singleness in the ministry. And I had taught it the previous semester. And I'm going back to work to teach singleness in the ministry, being a single person. And I tried to think about it. How do I reframe it? I have always talked about how people find themselves single, being single and being widowed. I'm now in it. So one of the mental struggles I had is looking at myself now on the other side of being a widow. So I am down in terms of my thinking. I'm asking myself, what is going, you know, why are people going to be describing me? And you know, sometimes it's also perpetuated by people. Yeah. People will introduce you, this is Ruth, who's the husband died. Labeling. Labeling. Mm. So you are there and you're asking, must you say that? And being able to bounce back and internalize that and take it without pain. And uh, let your mind register, it is true, that is the reality. And it is not changing. It is not, as you're saying, a walk in the park. It is not. Because it requires restructuring our own thinking. For us to have mental strength again, it requires a restructure. You had a job, you had a vehicle, you had a home. Everything went wrong. Auctioneers came, carried everything in the house. You don't even have a seat to, to sit on. So it requires some mental restructuring, some mental energy to be able to say, yes, the house is empty, but I can still pick my pieces. I can still take my mat and walk. I, I think about mental resilience, mm -hmm. and I think about those people that Jesus was relating with mm -hmm. you have been you have been blind for years yeah a miracle has been performed yes. but jesus has just applied mud <laughs> on, on your, your eyes. eyes yeah and he's saying go wash you don't even know where the, <laughs> where the water is it requires a lot of, of mental resilience to be able to actually gain your energy the mental strength that i can do it even in the state that i am in and be able to move on. So it is not easy because there are also so many challenges along that mental restructuring, the energy rebuilding of our mental. Because sometimes even people don't want you to pick yourself. They want you to stay in a state where they can keep sympathizing with you. It is more, they know how to relate you best after crisis when you're in that state. So you need to know, how do you regain that strength? Because if you are looking for it externally, sometimes it may not be available because of the circumstances around. So it is not easy to be able to have that mental strength unless you purpose, mm -hmm. unless we restart, you know, positive thinking. Yes. Because mental strength means uh, that we are able to now start thinking positively. Again, noting, it is not because the situation has changed. Mm -hmm. Some may not have changed. Mm -hmm. Some may, some may not. Mm -hmm. But having some mental positive thinking that, yes, I am in it. This might be the lifestyle. But then how do I refocus my thinking? It is not easy. I hear you speaking to a politician mm -hmm. who has lost an election. Right. As you put it uh, mm -hmm. earlier, mm -hmm. that we've just completed our election. Mm. I'm, I'm seeing this person in the house mm -hmm. because all, all along, mm -hmm. the people around him, the significant others, mm -hmm. were telling him, Niwewe, mm -hmm. and now he's alone. Mm -hmm. Probably you could uh, speak to somebody. Mm -hmm. and, and, and just uh, especially those that are in the houses right now, mm -hmm. they have used all their resources. Mm -hmm. Their thinking has been changed mm -hmm. about people. Mm -hmm. You could say something about it mm -hmm. in the camera. Right. Yeah. Uh, indeed, it is true. It can be disappointing, especially when hope has been built on someone. 
and there's that consistent reassurance that uh, you could be the one winning. And uh, there is a lot of investment, emotional investment. There was financial investment. There was even social investment. And uh, the final results comes out differently, not in the expected way. I want to say that there is always an opportunity to bounce back. It is possible to pick up and move on. And it requires a lot of positive self-talk. Yesterday may not be good, but there is a future tomorrow. There is a future that is coming tomorrow. There is a brighter tomorrow. I like the singer who sang and say that um, there is a destination and a focus. So even if it's crawling, you may have crawled and never made it. Just like a child learns to talk, walk and they make two steps and fall. It is a fall, yes, but it is important to pick up the broken pieces and move on because there's a greater life ahead. It is not all lost. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. You talked about now the types of yes. resilience. You've There's this other to... one we call emotional mm -hmm. resilience. Yes. When this life knocks us down, it leaves us with mixed emotions. And most of the emotions are not positive. It's not a laughing matter. True. We, have, we get ourselves with negative emotions. Emotions like anger, yeah. which you direct to anybody. This anger can also be directed even to God. Because you don't understand why God was unfair to you, probably after serving God for some time. I said I have helped work with people in loss and grief. And any time you help somebody, the, 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 the feedback is, God bless you. And I took every word as it was said. And now it has happened to me. I'm asking God, is this the blessings? Are these the blessings? Is this really how you repay your people? So there is emotion of anger towards God. This emotion of anger can be towards others, even those that were not involved. You will find people having outbursts. Currently, you know you're watching social media and you find your emotional equilibrium getting affected. Mm -hmm. Because you find people throwing every kind of anger outburst, abuses in the social media. Because emotional, people have been knocked down emotionally. Their expectations have been unmet. And so they are, they are throwing tantrums. There is anger all over. That anger is directed even to the family members who are not involved in whatever has happened. It is not a surprise, somebody with, who knocked down emotionally, you will say hi to them, Habariyako, Simzuri, I'm not good. And you wonder, how do you respond? You know, we are African and we, are, we, are, we have learned, when you ask how you are, even when things are so bad, you respond and say, it is, you're okay. You're okay. And now you're down emotionally. You, you, you're in church. I'm looking at this person like me who go to church. And uh, the praise and worship team is singing and saying, praise the Lord, raise your hands up. You're wondering, what are you saying? <laughs> Why am <laughs> I raising my hands? Why hand? am I raising? You're emotionally knocked down. <laughs> You're even getting angry by people who are happy around you. So emotional knocking down comes with negatives. There's irritability that you cannot even pinpoint. It's coming from here. But you are irritable. Very few things, small things that never mattered are now irritating matters. A comment, even a you know, positive one, it is enough to irritate someone. I remember one time I had this lady who, friend, a colleague and a friend, who had gone again to the gym, but not to cut weight, mm -hmm. to strengthen the muscles. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, definitely these things go together. So instead of strengthening the muscles alone, she also cut some weight. And the first part that we note you have cut weight is our face. Yes. So uh, part of her face was affected. And uh, someone looked at her and said, have you been sick? She said, no. And someone said, no, 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 you seem to have been sick. And this hit in this person's mind that things are not right. So she went seeking medical attention because she thought she's sick. She went for tests. But that became a beginning point of a mental illness. 
to a point that at some point it took her to a psychiatric clinic and a psychiatric ward. But what happened when someone said, you have changed, you seem to have been unwell, your face is changed. It is something I valued, my face. And then something has happened and everything is changing not to what I like. So picking that person back, I remember one time she kept telling me, Ruth, I don't have a problem. If only these people can actually agree to take me for plastic surgery. Things would be different. I am not sick. They are wasting their money in a psychiatric ward. Things can be different. But you see, emotionally, she was knocked down and she was not able to pick herself up. And now what is coming out is outburst of anger, irritability. We meet with Jane. I don't want to look at Jane because I'm telling myself with those hurting emotions, Jane can pick the changes that have taken place and I don't like them. So that happens, and uh, anger, irritability, sometimes sadness. It throws us to the bargaining. If this happens, maybe God, this, you do this, I'm going to do this. And we struggle with those emotions. Some people fall in depression, and they get deep down in some pits of depression because they're not able to pick their, calm their emotions again. So Emotional resilience is now getting to develop that emotional calmness and understanding our emotions, being able to pick those emotions and dealing with those emotions in a more constructive way. Mm -hmm. In that stressful situation, in that condition that I may have been, that might be my lifestyle, how do I calm my emotions? and be able to move on. So picking up self in terms of that ability to calm our emotions in stressful situation is what we talk about, emotional resilience. It is a type of resilience. Yes. And we'll hold that one right now because I can see mm -hmm. we will not finish in part one. Mm -hmm. We'll do part two mm -hmm. so that you can Finish on the, what, uh, the point that you are at, mm -hmm. the emotional resilience, and then you can go to the next one, and then we, uh, the, the next uh, type, mm -hmm. then we can move on to that. That will be our part two of resilience. Mm -hmm. our, our viewer, I really appreciate this time that we have been together with Ruth and talking about resilience. You can even note that my voice has changed from the way I usually do because of what is coming in and what I'm internalizing. And I believe that you are also internalizing something about resilience. And probably you are catching yourself wherever you are. You are telling yourself, so that is what happened to me when I was knocked down by this situation in my life. Remember to continue sharing with us. Give us feedback. Ask questions. Share with us some of the experiences that you have gone uh, through on our social media platform, on our YouTube uh, Health Now Show, on our Facebook Health Now Show, and we'll be able to continue supporting you because I believe all of us, we have gone through one thing or other that has really destabilized us and knocked us down. And until next time for part two, bye for now. God bless you. <music>